Okay. Um, I'm going to just do a sort of stream of consciousness live uh, data cleaning exercise uh, just to demonstrate, I don't know, some tools for cleaning up messy Excel files from government websites like this one. So I'm working on this project where I'm looking at uh, how people drive their vehicles. I'm looking at mileage on different vehicle listings. I have a lot of data for this, but one thing I want to control for is gas prices. So if you have high gas prices, you're probably not going to drive as far. At least that's the idea. So I want to make sure I have a good data set that's clean and easy to work with in my modeling. And I've been looking for gas price data, and this is really all I could come across was the US EIA. Um, but the tricky thing is they don't have it by state. They have some states, but then they also just have these sort of regions, these pad regions, which I don't even know what that really means. Um, so I went ahead and each one of these websites, I just hit download the series history and I put them into this folder. Um, I should say this is my, you know, my, my big project folder for this overall project. So inside my data folder, I have this gas prices Excel sheets. I've already gone ahead and downloaded these things. I also found this map, which has these pads by region. So somewhere in this process, I'm probably going to have to hand code, like which region, which states belong to which region, which is going to be a real pain. But, you know, I only have to do 50 manual entries, so I'll get to that. Um, in my readme file, which I always have in every data folder, I explain, you know, what every file is in this data folder. In the gasoline prices, I just say this is, you know, monthly prices, and this is the website, uh, the link to that site. All right, so I'm going to start cleaning. I'm going to open up my project, and, well, I probably need to make a file. So in code is where I keep any of my code files. Uh, most of this stuff has to do with everything else in this big project, but I'm going to make one for sort of making gas data. I'm just going to copy one of these and say clean gas data, something like that. Um, there it is. And this is all the other stuff that was in it. Uh, I'm not going to need these two packages. I'll probably just need tidyverse. So let's just start with that. And start working. Um, I know I'm going to read this in. Uh, let's just read in one of these, like Central Atlantic. Why not? Uh, oops, <laughs> I accidentally opened it. Well, that's fine. I'll probably want to look at it anyway. Um, I'll copy the name and I'll read it in. So I'll say DF is, let's use the tier package. Kind of a good practice for building paths to things. Oh, sorry. This isn't a CSV. This is Excel. So I'm going to need read Excel, and let's just see what I get. Although it is the second sheet, so I'm going to need to, oh gosh, this is awful. Data one, this is what I'm going to have to read from. So let's do this. I think there's like a sheet. Yeah, sheet equals that. But I already know I'm going to have problems because we need to skip some things. Like, ugh, this is a mess. Um, I don't know what these all are. These all look the same. No, there are differences. Um, boy, this is going to be a horrible header name. Let's let's say skip to so we get this as our header name, and we'll work from there. And it does look like it goes all the way to October 2022, and it's November 2022 right now. So that's pretty good. It's pretty comprehensive. 1993. So we're going to say skip equals two. Let's see what we get. Does not exist. Of course. Um, what did I do wrong? Where is my path? Oh, it's nested inside this other folder called gasoline prices. That's what I messed up. So let's just put that in here. Now we get a data frame. That's going to be pretty awful. Um, yeah, I want to be able to see all my columns. So I'm going to just set that option. Equalizer dot width equals and now I can sort of see everything, but still looks just terrible. These names are awful. Let's clean the names. Yeah, okay, we're getting somewhere now, but boy, all of this is just sort of. Let's just look at what the names are. They all start with the same thing. 
holy crap this is such a mess so i don't need any of those i can just drop all of this from all the names i think i can just rewrite this names of df um can i just do string replace of <laughs> names of df but like anytime you see this thing just get rid of it now do i have this okay well that's a little better and i think they all end in like retail gasoline prices dollar per gallon which is also terrible um i think they all have that so let's do that too i'll copy this thing and i'll chop that off too so names of df should be a little more okay we're getting something better now it's not these controls here where do I hide my floating control? Okay, I'm doing this on Zoom. So my recording is on Zoom. Um, just because I'm sort of pedantic about line breaks, I'll just move this down. Um, okay, so there's that. What do I need to do now? I probably only really need a couple things. I'm probably, I'm going to just envision that I need Lubridate for this just because I'm dealing with dates there, this thing. And let's just kind of look at the sheet again. God, this is awful. Uh, so Atlantic, all grades, retail gasoline prices. This is all grades, all formulations. I probably just want like standard gasoline. I'm looking at the top of this. We have conventional retail gas. We have reformulated all regular all formulations. What's the difference between these things? Regular conventional, regular reformulated. I'm guessing that's like probably things with E85 in it or something. Mid-grade, premium, and then diesel. Okay, so I definitely don't want any of those. I think I just want regular. So I have conventional retail, reformulated, all formulations and then conventional gas so regular conventional retail gas versus all grades i'm thinking this is actually what i want but let's just go to the site and see right see they have these different things all grades conventional this is probably like an average of everything so regular conventional is what i want yeah i'm gonna go with that which is column f regular conventional which in our studio is regular conventional okay well it's not that messy so i'm just going to keep the date in that thing and drop literally everything else and i don't i don't care what anything else um so let's say select date and i'm going to call it just price this whole mess oh there we go and it did actually record it as a date time which looks correct it's recording it as the 15th of every month, but it's actually, oh, it's this, because it actually is like the 15th of every month. Weird, but Excel, of course, shows it the other way. So it is the 15th every month. Okay, that must be when they're getting the data sets in. So let's, all right, so we've, we've got somewhere now. Maybe I can get rid of any NAs. I don't know if I have any NAs. Um, let's just say, filter out any, on date or um, price too. And we're going to overwrite this thing. Okay, so we've got a pretty clean data set of the date and the price. I guess the only thing left is the region. It's the name of the thing. I need to sort of encode this because I want to merge all them together. So let's let's create a thing called region. And we'll call it Central Atlantic, which is that. So we've read it in. We've cleaned our names. We've replaced some things. I think I can actually just do this inside a mutate now. No, I don't want to do that because I'm calling the names of everything. So there's probably some like really clever way to do that. I just don't really know how to do it. So um, let's do that. And then I've got a DF. So now if I gave it a different sheet, I should be able to parameterize this where I can give it a sheet and get a clean result that is a different one. So like if I just change, let's call it like 
sheet name and we'll just replace this thing with that except this is going to be part of it and so will this so we're going to need to parse that out but let's just check if i gave it like let's say lower atlantic so let's change this to lower um oops lower i get all the sheets but then i can get rid of this and i'm going to bet you all i'm doing is changing this let's just see yep uh it still did it oh that's why because it's also pad 1d so this is pad 1c we want to make sure that is going to get done right so names the f okay and that's working and i have regular conventional here and this would be lower and i have my clean data set okay so i'm kind of getting it but there's some tweaks here where the name i'm parsing out starts with pad is a problem the sheet name is fine that's parameterized this is part of the sheet name i can get this from here so instead of lower atlantic i'm just going to say um how do i drop this i'll just get rid of xls um string replace of the sheet name and anytime you see this just give it that i think that'll be the thing it gets yeah put in there oops I'm just run it all yeah okay so region there's my region I'm, I'm taking care of that so it's only this parsing out bit that's going to be a problem um goodness new england what do we get for new england do the names all start with this so central atlantic starts with central atlantic and it has pad 1b this one starts with new england pad 1a okay so we just have to know which pads are sort of associated with each thing, I think, which I'm going to need that anyway. So I'm probably going to need some sort of data frame that tells me the region name with, uh, what's it called? It's pad. What about a state like Texas, Texas, all grades. This just has Texas. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to have a, a link between the sheet name or sort of the root of the sheet name with the pad associated with it. So let me see if I can make that link before I try to fully parameterize this. Let's just try Texas real quick and see what Texas looks like. So here's the sheet name. I'm going to read in DIA and let's just look at what these things see these all start with Texas instead of all of this thing hmm I think I'm going to need to do this link all right so why don't we do this we'll copy all the file names we'll make um some sort of region link to all of these things I think um where will you see something like lower atlantic and it's gonna also say lower atlantic pad 1c so that's the link um i would do this here i don't actually have a really handy trick i i know in our studio you can hold alt and select and get a bunch uh a bunch of different cursors i'm going to just open up sublime text because i think that's kind of a nicer tool for this for doing some quick editing so this is like another trick I'll do if I have a file that has a common feature in it like this dot xls I can look for that and say search all and now I have all these cursors right so I can just like do this make strings set these equal to their pad things so whatever the pad variable would be comma now I can bring this back and drop it in here so this is going to be a little data frame um oh uh, wait a minute but i'm doing equals that's not what i really want to do um let's not make it equals sorry let's just make it commas so then i can make a triple i think that's what i want to do is make a triple thing so we'll call this um pads is a triple and i have we'll call it file name and 
uh, pad, I guess. And so that should all work. Oh, there's a pad map. I don't need that. Okay, so now I just need to make sure I replace whatever I have as pad for each file with the correct um, pad in the file. So lower Atlantic is like lower Atlantic pad 1C. So this thing is going to look like that. Um, Central Atlantic will be probably the same, but it's central. Um, when I have these state files, it looks like it's reading it as just um, the state. So I'm going to guess this is probably just Texas. Texas, this is probably California, but you know we can we can check it very quickly by just doing these things like CA. Um, yeah, it's California, so I'm going to need that. Colorado, I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in. I'm sure this is all the same. Colorado. So this is like annoying manual editing, but you got to do it. Um, Gulf Coast, this is going to be tricky. How do I do? What is, what's Gulf Coast look like? Oh, it actually just says Gulf Coast. Well. Wow. Not that hard. Um, okay, this is probably Massachusetts, but I always forget how to spell Massachusetts. So it's that. I'm going to grab that name. Whoops, copied this. Midwest is, I'm going to, well, that's the thing, is I need the pads. I realize what I just did here. I left off the pad part for Gulf Coast. Oh, this is tedious. It's. Oh, what did I do wrong? It's not Gulf Coast. Oh, it's Dash. Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast. Oh, no, there is no pad on Gulf Coast. Oh, man, what a mess. Let me just look at this map again. It's <laughs> this is pad three, but like it doesn't have it on that one. There's no pad thing in the string. Let's try Midwest. I'm going to have to just check every one of these, I think, because I don't trust it. You know what? I'm going to make this a little thing I just run where I can just very quickly do that. Midwest is Midwest, so that's not hard. MN is just Minnesota, so we're going to grab that. Um, Minnesota. New England. I bet you this one has a pad in the name. Yeah, see, this has pad 1A. That must be just those three things because there's a 1C and 1, 1A. Oh, so these are probably, one of these is wrong. New England, Central Atlantic is probably the 1B. Oh, that's 1A. No, it's not. Typo. It's 1B. So Central Atlantic is 1B. So this is, okay, New England's A, Lower Atlantic's B, and then Central Atlantic is C. Did I do that wrong? Sorry, Central Atlantic's B. So this is B. That makes sense. New England's the top, that's A, then the Central is B, and then the lower is C. Okay, that, that kind of fits what I would expect. Ah, New York, almost there. New York is just New York. I guess this is New York. Um, this is probably just Ohio. Let's see if I could type. Rocky Mountain is probably just Rocky Mountain with an underscore, no pad name in it. Rocky Mountain. This is probably just Washington. And then this is very confusing. West Coast minus CA. I think I that's the name of that. I named it that because it's West Coast Pad 5 except California. Wow, it's like a super long name. Um, okay, so there's all our links. If I have this pads thing, this connects the file name to the pad that I'm going to parse out. So instead of sheet name, I'm actually going to embrace that file name and get rid of the CXLS and paste it here. So my sheet name is not going to be this. It's going to be paste zero file name and dot XLS. And then down here, oh, let's bring that down here. Um, down here, you read in the file name 
you parse out whatever is the link here, the, the pad that connects the file to the, the pad name, that's going to be parsed out here. Um, and then I need to add a region. So the region is just going to be the file name, I think. I'll just make it the file name for now. I think that's fine. Um, okay. So I should be able to say, uh, let's load a file name like West Coast minus VA, CA, read it in, replace the names. And it looks like it did not replace. Oh, that's right, because I'm not replacing this. So I'm replacing it with some kind of replacement. And the replacement's going to be finding where in my pads triple this thing is. This, so it's this name. Like this is the thing I need to replace based on this file name. So I'm going to just call it replacement. And we're going to just find this replacement. It's going to be pads. And we're going to look for which pads file name. Do I want to do it this way? Oh, I can just, it'll be easy with the tidy approach. Like take my pads and filter out where the file name is equal to the file. Oh, this might not work because of that particular choice. Um, shoot, this may not work well. Let's see, does it work? I'm gonna have to change these to something else. Um, let's just call it file here instead of file name, that'll probably work. Um, so then it's gonna be equal to that file. So I have replacement is this row, and then I can pull the pad. I can say pull uh, pad. So now I'm gonna get the pad. Oh, right, instead of calling it replacement, why don't I just call it? Okay, well, that works, replacement. So it's gonna replace this whole string with nothing. I'm just gonna just drop it. Um, let's try it. Or just DF. Look at that. Date, price, region. Now, if I change this to a different file like Texas, select all. <laughs> that didn't work. Um, what happened? Where did it break? So I'm getting the DF. Here's my replacement. I do have Texas in it. Names. Seems like it. Oh, it's because I haven't changed this. It's file. Okay, we didn't. Okay, so this should work. Yeah. <laughs> okay, something's still wrong. Um, I have a file, df. Um, yeah, I'm getting the Texas one now. What's my replacement? So let's read in my df. Let's see, my replacement is Texas. So names df. Yeah, that's working. So what's wrong here? It's all there. This is this is all working. So it's something down here. Region equals file, not file name. That's it. Yeah, Texas. All right, now we can try. So that's Texas. Let's change it to California. Still have a problem. What is the problem? I'm getting California. The data's coming in. What's my replacement? California, names DF, sorry, let's type right. Um, yeah, that's all working. And file CA, this should work. I'm gonna select regular conventional doesn't exist in California. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? I happen to pick a state where there is a distinction between the grades of, of gas. Maybe California doesn't even have regular conventional or something because I don't know if California has like crazy fuel economy standards. What? Let me tell you, man, just government sheets. Like someone should just make this a sheet, like a one giant tidy data set. Why they don't have this? It's so frustrating. I mean, if I'm done with this, I might actually just make a package so that you can just import this data that's already formatted. California, what is going on? Actually, forget looking at that. Let's look here. California, what's going on? You don't have regular. They don't have regular conventional. They only have regulated, reformulated. 
and high gas prices. Um, so let's see, does anyone else not have this? Okay, Massachusetts doesn't either. Does Minnesota not have it? Okay, they only have conventional, but not the other one. Oh boy. Um, what a mess these different states are. And some states have both, conventional areas and reformulated areas. Well, it doesn't really look like it's making a huge difference. So maybe I just need to use the word like regular as my search key. That might actually help a lot. Like I've got regular all formulations and regular reformulated. So let's see what happens if I take, um, after I've done my replacement, what if I just select things that have regular in the name and see what I get? Um, and I'm not going to do this yet. I'm just going to come down here and say, select date. And then um, I think it's contains something like that. Contains regular. Oh, and prints it out. Yeah, so I'm getting regular all and regular reformulated. So what if I, if I did Texas where they don't have this reformulated stuff? Uh, Texas will have regular all, regular conventional, and regular reformulated. Man, these are so similar too. They're almost the same. It shouldn't really matter. Um, I think what I'm going to do is parse for regular first. Drop anything that has all in it, because that's like a summation of, I think. Um, uh, or maybe I should just use all, because they all have all. So like... All grades reformulated areas. No, no, it's this. It, un, underneath the regular, there's conventional and reformulated areas. So these are must be places that had. Do does it tell me anything about this? What's conventional? Like there should be some notes. Conventional areas. It's an area that does not require sale of reformulated gasoline. All types of, may be sold in this area. RFG area is an ozone non-attainment area. Wow, this is complicated. Which requires the use of reformulated gasoline. Okay, so some places in these states have reformulated areas, some places have conventional, and that would explain why California, 100% of the places are reformulated. So then in California, what's called regular all should just be the same as reformulated, right? Like, it, Texas has both of these, but California shouldn't. California should only have the one, and they should all be the same thing, right? Yeah, see, all formulations, it's N-A, and that's probably because there's only one formulation, which is regular, or the, reform, the, the, the reformulated regular. So I'm going to have to do a drop all, I think. And then we'll, or maybe we should do a search. So if, if let's say, if all is NA or something, then you use the reformulated one. look at Texas again. Man, this is tricky. Yeah, all areas, all formulations is going to be, I think, it's like an average of these two, right? That looks right, because that's 1.51. This is 5 and 5.2. So actually, we should just be using this. That's what we should do. We should just use the all, because it's an average of these two, which is sort of the entire state. So some places have higher prices or lower, slight variations in the prices because of like conventional versus reformulated. But on average, that's the state average. So I'm going to say you search for all after this and grab that one. And if it's missing, then we need to go to a state that only has, well, if all is missing, we need to grab only one of these, which was the case in that other state. What was it? Ohio or something? Yeah, Ohio only has conventional. So let's see what Ohio looks like. Yeah, see, it's the same. They have all these things. So um, we'll try to grab all. But if all is in a, we'll use the next thing, whatever that is. Boy, this is a mess. Um, what's, the, what's the end of it look like? It's all the same. OK. Well, I've gotten down to my regular. Now I just need to make some final decision on what I'm selecting. I think California is the only weird situation where if I just did all, I would get NAs, right? Because, yeah, see, it's all missing. 
at the end it <laughs> oh god look at this it's 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 here and it's missing on reformulated so what a mess california is let's just what the heck is going on in, in california it's missing most of these and then somewhere in here there's the same and then it's missing again look at this so i need like i need to take like the mean of this and drop the na's and the mean and that would like I think, solve that problem. I just need to know how many I need to take a mean of. Um, what's the best thing to do here? Um, let's just pick another state just to see if we get some other weird thing going on. Yeah, I could just take a mean across these things and that would that would be fine. Or I can just take the regular all formulated it's like california seems to be like the only one that's really messed up which is very typical california is always the exception there's something very different in california when it comes to cars and gas prices and things like that um so close to being able to automate this but i i haven't got it just right yet um what to do, what to do. Reformulations. If I say choose the one that has all in it, that'll work. Um, I think I just need to rename these things. Maybe I need to do some, some logic where it's like, um, I think they all follow the same formation. So if there's three columns, I just take the all. If there's four columns, I take the um, if there's three columns, like Texas only has Texas doesn't have no, Texas does have both. Which one didn't have it? Ohio. Ohio only had conventional. Yeah, it only has conventional. So I, this doesn't even work though. I can't even do a general strategy where if there's three columns, take you know the second one because California doesn't have that. It has that problem. Uh, um, what am I going to do? All right, let's take a break. I'll come back. I can't figure this out. I need to take a mental break. Uh, okay, I think I'm back. Yeah. All right. So here's what I'm going to try to do. I think when I was, I stopped and ate some lunch, um, which again, that's what I always recommend my students do is stop and take a break when you're hitting your head against the wall. So I was starting to run into a wall there. And the main, I think, source of that was just my misunderstanding of the data itself. I had to stop and go back to the actual source to read these details about conventional areas and reformulated areas and realizing that different states and I maybe I guess even different regions like if you look at some of these different sort of pad regions um have conventional areas and reformulated areas and not everywhere has both of these some only have one some have one but the sort of all category has some missing information that's probably because at different points in time regulations changed and so what I, I think I'm going to do instead is instead of trying to sort of tidy up everything at the very end here <clears throat> where I grab like one of these and rename it I think all I'm going to do is just stop here where I've got some date and then anything that has regular in the name and then just clean that up one more time like and, and since I've called clean names twice I'm just going to load the whole well I don't want to load the whole package just to do one function Janitor is a great package, does like so many great things, but that's all I ever really use it for is cleaning the names. So now I end up with like a cleaner name and I don't know what these are gonna be. So some states are gonna have, uh, all states should have the all category. Some will have conventional, some will have reformulated, some will have both. And now I can just sort of grab that. Um, uh, I guess I can always get rid of anything that's a missing date too. So that doesn't hurt. Drop missing dates. Um, 
and oh, I do need that file name. I need that to be tagged onto it as well. So we're going to add that to the end. Okay. So now any state I give it, like Texas, I can run the whole thing. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to get away with this. I'm still missing something. Goodness. Um, this is Texas. Yep. Yeah. DF. Looks like that. Um, <clears throat> Select date and anything containing regular. That's good. Oh, this is it. I had this NA that I had left over. That doesn't exist. Okay, so I can give it a name like Texas and get a data frame that has date and any whatever regular columns there are. Some will have more columns than another. If I give it a different state like California, California doesn't have the conventional. It only has the reformulated one. So I'll deal with the missing, you know, NAs here and the regular or reformulated versus conventional. I'll deal with that later. I think all I'm going to do now is loop through all of these pads and do this formulation. So what I'm going to need to do is make a function here. I'm going to call this like, let's say, read it. And do I want to call it read it in or clean it? Um, I'm just going to say get what gas prices something like that no no let's call it read because i'm reading it in so read gas price file something like that not a not a great um function name it's a function and it's going to take in a file name and it also needs this pads data frame or triple got and now i can just indent everything bump that in and that's it and then return this df so now I should be able to like run this on a file name. And if I load this, I've got my pads. I've got read gas price. I actually need both of these things. Um, so I should be able to say like CA here. Um, sorry, it's not a function. And I get something. Yeah. And if I change this to TX, I'm getting Texas, right? So now, see, some of these have more columns than the others. And if I did another state like Ohio, with that, if I do a region, which was like Central Atlantic, I think that was one. Yeah, right? And again, I'm having some issues with some of these have more than another, but I could just easily loop through my pads and get everything. So, I mean, I could call it, let's read them as a list maybe. And then I'll do work on each item in the list to clean up that list. So let's say, um, what do we want to call this? Um, gas price list. I don't know, something like that. And then I can, I think I can, uh, I could do an L apply here, but that's just going to be, I don't know if this is going to be weird because I have this pads argument. I'm just going to loop it, whatever. Loops are fine, okay? Loops are totally fine. As long as you're indexing, I, I think it should be just fine. Um, for I in one, two, and row of pads, that's the, yeah, 16. I'm getting each of these things. You're going to say uh, the gas price list. Index I is going to be equal to this. Read it in, except it's pads. Uh, instead of this, it's the file name. So it's like, um, oh, this is even weirder now. I guess I could just give it the name for replacement. Oh, this is going to get better, I think. So if I do pads i, or how about this? Pads file name i, like if i is one, that's that's the name. And then I just need the re the replacement. So I could do the same thing. I could just say pads, pad I, like that's the replacement term text, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't even need this. I can just make this replacement up here. That's the, and then I can just completely get rid of this. <clears throat> so this should work now. If I give it that, I have an I is one, and I, I should be able to say like, read my gas price. Yeah, yeah, it's working just fine. I is two. I'm sorry, IS2, and I get something different. Yeah, I get California. 
Okay, so let's run it. Select all run. It's pretty quick. Um, so my gas price list, I can look at each of these and see that I'm getting different regions and different states. And so now I can clean this up. Like this is a whole separate process um, where I can figure out some sort of logic based on the number of rows or number of columns there are. Like if they all should have some all formulations in it, they all should have... Um, <clears throat> They all should have, well, they some will have conventional, some will have reformulated. I think that's what I need to figure out. I guess I can just clean up this name. This is like an annoying name. I don't like this. I could clean it here. This should all be the same. I, I should be able to say rename where it's like all is equal to this. Let's just try that. My gas price list three. Yeah, now it just says all. Okay. Um, so now I need to come up with some sort of decision logic where it says, uh, you know, depending on what's available, um, you I, like you could just take the mean of this. Like this is an interesting case where you've got conventional and sum and NA here. This is 1993 though. So I bet you, if you look at this, there's probably, yeah, see the reformulated comes in later. And the all is just the average of these two things, right? See, it's these two averaged. You know, so I could just start with all, and it should work all the way through to the end, every every state, every month. I think all is good, except for California. It's literally just California. Like, number two is Texas, right? I'm sorry, two is California. This is the one where you got these weird things where it's, it's, it's the same in some, but then it's missing in others. So I just need to know, like, which to pull it from. Um, this was Texas? Yeah, see, all, I can just use all for all of Texas. So maybe I can just do some sort of decision logic where it's like, if it's all is missing, if NA, if is NA here, replace with uh, whichever of these is there. And I could also do another decision logic that says like, if they're both there, then take the mean. And if they're not there, how about I do that? Why don't I take the mean of both of these if they exist? And I'll get sort of some new category. And then I'll look for is an A and all. If it's missing, I'll grab that new category I've created. If one of, uh, um, so what's where's the if logic? I guess the if logic should be an all. Like if all is missing, only in that case, right? So like in California, if all is missing, then you need to take this. And if it's not missing, then that's it. The rest of this is fine. Let's just see if I can do that. Regular reformulated. I think I just need to check for regular, like regular reformulated. Um, I need to check if all is missing. If it is, we're going to check if this exists. If this exists, we'll use it. If reformulated doesn't exist, we'll check for the other one, which is conventional. One of those has to be there. Like there, there has to be something. Um, and and then we'll go from there, right? I think that works. We'll just grab whichever one is not missing. So, so maybe I can, um, instead of updating this here, I can just call this DF and I can do the work like on the fly inside my loop. Like, okay, let's just pick the first one and I can, I, I get my DF and I'm gonna look for all is missing. Um, <clears throat> Maybe we can just do it inside of mutate. I'm gonna call it price is equal to if else is NA of all. So if all is missing, we need to do something. Otherwise we use all, right? So if it is missing, we have to come up with a plan. Like, um, okay, here, we'll just separate these on lines. Sorry, no, let's put this here and put this on its own line. All right, so this is the the else condition. And like if it's if it's missing, we need to search for whether regular conventional is missing or not. But thing is, it it may not even exist. So if I try to use this name in a condition here, it'll probably fail. Um, what do I call it then? Maybe I just need to call it like regular. 
Um, hmm. Let's not do this in mutate. Let's pull out the DF and let's do some quick logic on the names. Right? Like if they're both here, I have a condition where they're they both exist. Um <clears throat> I can get rid of date, all, and region. And if I do this, I know what's left, right? So this is like my temporary category. And I'm gonna need to replace with this, I think is the is the like the idea. Um Yeah, actually, let's let's keep date. So we can maybe we can just do a join. Maybe this is this is getting a little messy, but I can see whatever is here, and um, depending on whatever else is there that's not date, I can make a new column. Um, maybe we can do it this way. Just a really basic if else logic, like if. Um, if n call is three, n call of my temp, if it's three, then I know they're all there. I should just be able to say mean. And then we're going to say temp is equal to uh, I'll I'll create this sort of final one. I'll just call it regular is equal the the mean of both of these things. I don't know if this will work. Is this right? I don't know if this is like actually the right thing to do. I might have to do like a cross thing. Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I think I have to do. I don't think I can take means across columns like this. I don't think this works. This seems like not correct. Um, I think I just add them. Let's just do an actual manual mean like this plus this divided by two. How about that? Yeah. And like, so I have a temp here. Here's my temp. And now I have like my regular. And then I can just select date and regular, right? Um, and so then I've got... Uh, I've got this. Um, I read in my data frame. I create a temp, and this is the thing I'm going to replace it with. Um, so I need to do a join now. Um, I'll do the other condition later. Like if it's not three, then it's either going to be only conventional or only reformulated. So like else, I can actually just like like let's pick one of these that's not like I is three. I think is. Our eyes too is California, so it'll look like whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, it'll look like this. Yeah, see, it only has three columns, so temp looks like this, and it only has one thing, so I, I don't have to do all this. I can just say, um, <clears throat> like names of temp two instead of this, it's just gonna be called regular, right? So, like, now I still have the same temp. So I still end up with the same thing. I have a date and a regular column, and then I just join those on to DF. So DF is equal to DF, and I'm going to left join my temp based on the date. So let's try this. Right, and now I'm going to either do all or regular. What I've called regular is, is a combination of things. It depends on the state that you're in. If you're in a state that only has one thing, it's just the same one thing, whether it's reformulated or whether it's conventional, doesn't matter. It's just going to be whatever this column is. Um, if it's a state that has both, then it's the average of those two. And I think this should work. Unless one of these is NA. If one of these is NA, we're going to be in trouble. Um, but we can just sort of hold that for now. Uh, we left join these things, and then we're going to do this whole mutate replacement so if na is missing we're going to use regular otherwise we'll use all and we can bump all this back to one line i think this will work okay 
and then this is going to be df. So we pick an i, i equals one, and we'll just run through this logic. Okay, I get all conventional and reformulated. The regular is the average of these two. So, so what I've got is regular should be the same as all. See, yeah, it's it's averaging. That's looking good. And then I have price. So all I really want is date and price at the end, but I'm, I'm keeping them just so I can check this. Now, what if I is two? This is California. My all is missing, but my regular was the same as the reformulated. So what I have is price is this. And actually let's, let's just check that this holds throughout. See price is picking up this one first. Uh, and then down here, it's not missing. So it's going to grab the all. See, there it is. No missing in price. I think we might be there. So all I really want is select date and price. Now I should be able to do this, get all my prices. Oh, I want my region though. Um, and region, right? I do need to keep region. Yeah. So let's try this for everything. Okay. It's a little slow because I had that like thing in there, that join. I don't know a better way to do this. I mean, it's not necessarily the most efficient solution here, let's be honest, but all the names are the same. And in fact, I can check these, L apply, gas price list names, and get that they are all the same. So I should be able to join them all together, just R bind them. So my final data set is going to be do dot call R bind on my gas price list. Done. I can check all my regions. Yep, got all my regions. I have dates and I have prices for every region. We're done. So we, we got a clean data set. I, I don't know if there's any that are missing. I could just check this real quick. You know, is that any price? I'm sorry, filter. Ah, I do have some missing prices. And there's 36 rows. So um, I can see which ones very quickly by just doing that data frame. There are a few missing ones. Um, and that might be because of just all missing data in those regions in that dates. I don't know. There's like a very particular set here in the West Coast. This seems bad. These are all very unique to these two timestamps, May of 92 and May of 2003 in, in these different places. So we're not 100% there, but we're very, very close, like 99% of the way. We've got all of our different regions. We're reading them in. We've cleaned up. We've read it in in some sort of generally standardized way. Um, and internal to the loop, instead of doing this all inside this cleaning step, we're sort of taking that data frame and conditionally cleaning the price based on whether it's in a conventional or reformulated area or not. This NA I'm assuming is probably coming from this. It's probably coming from this, this regular uh, mean calculation I've done where one of these is NA. Like if, if one of these things is NA, then this is just going to fail. Um, so I don't have a good solution here. I need to sort of do an additional check to say like, if NA, then don't do the average, just take the one thing. Um, I can come up with a quick fix there, but um, you know, there you go, 69 lines of code and we've got mostly clean data. Um, so not too bad going from this just absolute mess of, of a site uh, with very disaggregated data files that are all messy Excel files to a tidy data frame that has dates, prices, and regions. Um, I think my next step will be to do another thing like this, where I make a translation between the region or the pad and the actual state, because I want to break it down by state. And so some states I have, like Colorado, I have separately. So I could separate out Colorado from pad four, and then I could say every other state in here is just going to take the pad four price. Um, so that's my additional step. So I'll leave like little notes for myself here. It'll it'll say, um, you know, go from 
pad to state. That's one thing I want to do. And I'm going to say, you know, check NAs here. You know, what's what do I do about that? NAs? But that's it. I think that's that's pretty good for, you know, a rough cleanup job. Thanks for watching. Okay. I'm going to do an epilogue here because I, I do want to figure out like what's going on with these NAs. Um, so I'm not quite satisfied. I'm not done. Um, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm, I'm pretty sure the source of the problem is in here. So I think I just need to do an if else statement where if one of these is an NA, to just not use it. Like don't do the average. Just take the one that's not missing. Um, and I can see it by looking at like if I run all this stuff, but I look at the last one, the West Coast one, like it's at the end of my pads. It's the last one, I is 16. I can actually just look at it like this is I is 16. Um, and you can see this. If you look here, you can see there's cases where like this would this would be this condition where n call of my temp is three because my temp is my temp is just these three columns the date with these two things i've gotten rid of the all in regions so i'm saying take an average here and there's na's so what i need to do is actually say regular equals an if else condition where like if one of these is na take the other or vice versa something like that so i think this is going to be like a little bit of a tricky uh situation or well, i'm just going to kind of do this all inside mutate and i think what i'm going to do is case when actually regular is case when and this is like a really handy tool when you have weird conditions so i think if they're both na i'm just going to have to say na like there's nothing i can do so is an a of this and by the way i know that i know these are both here they should, conventional and reformulated should both be in here because I've already conditioned for that by saying there's three columns. So I should be able to reliably say, is NA that and uh, is NA of this? If they're both in NA, they're both missing, then it's just NA. If it's one or the other, I'm gonna have to do the other cases. So when only this one's missing or when only this one's missing, what am I going to do? So if conventional is missing, I'm going to just use reformulated. If reformulated is missing, I'm going to use conventional. And if neither are missing, so I'm at that condition, then I can do my, my averaging, where I'm going to say true, every other condition, it's going to be this, where I've added them up and I've taken the mean of those two. Uh, I think think this works and then I have a case when that closes here and a mutate that closes here so let's try this again on this particular case here's my temp I'm going to make this change for what I call regular and in fact I'm, I'm going to let's not let's not get rid of this yet let's just overwrite it see we have a problem um Something is wrong with my case win. Maybe I have to wrap this in a condition when both of those things are true. It's NA. Let's try that. Yeah, I think that might have. No, that didn't do it actually. Sorry. Uh, what is happening? Let's look at like a little, a little trace back. Show me the problem. Hmm. That's not a very helpful error message. Let's just do it again and let's try what it says. Uh, try Arlang error message. Temp case when. Uh, it's using it. Maybe I'm using case when wrong. I use this thing all the time. Yeah, a dynamic condition. Yeah, like this is true. Then you give the result. Um, hmm. 
Maybe I can't use NA. I don't know. If they're both missing, you just make it NA. What if I just pick, pick a number? Like, will that fix it? Ah, so it doesn't like it. I can't, it doesn't like being able to put NA. So I just put one here because it didn't like me putting NA. That's annoying. Maybe if else won't do this. Um, but if I just use a bunch of nested if else's, which is kind of the same thing as, as it, case when. So if else this condition is true, then do NA else do another one. If this is true, then use this else. Um, we have another if else, then use, use the conventional. And then finally, you're not any of those, you're at the end. So you're going to use this last condition, which is this thing divided by two. And then we have to close our if else condition loops. Let's see if that kind of fixes it. So this is my temp. And will this work? See, now if else works. So if something was weird was going on. I didn't know this. If you have a case one condition, it doesn't like you to put NA at the end. But I think I took care of it. So now I should be able to view this thing and look at all the cases here. So if like this is working, if it's both are missing, it's still missing. It takes this value when one is missing. When they're both here, it takes the mean. And again, when this is missing, it grabs the other one. So I think that solves the problem. It's like a complicated set of logic where that works out, but I think that solves it. So that's the only thing I needed to add here. It's a kind of a mess here of, of code. Um, let's just back indent this so it's a little easier to see maybe. Okay, uh, now we run it. Okay, that took care of the main missing values when you had this thing. The other ones I think are legitimately just missing. Like these are actual NAs. We don't have any values for those. So I can like look at any of these things like Florida. When Where, where, where is Florida? Florida is number five. So if I say I equals five, I can go back over here. I can look at the DF and there you have it. It's like, see, it's just straight up not there. We don't have anything for um conventional or all so it's just a missing value um so there's a few that happen to be missing now i can double check this in the raw source this is may 15th in florida like what's going on here maybe i can pull up florida and see if it's actually missing i bet it is i bet it is yep see may 2003 it's missing so there's a few data files that just have actual missing values. And in that case, I can actually just, like I'm gonna have to drop these things, I think. I think my data is gonna be do call and then filter not missing price, right? So that's my final sort of cleaned up data set. And it's pretty big, it's 4,000 rows. Now I don't have the paths taken care of yet, I still have just regions. And that's gonna be annoying because the sub of these things are nested, like Colorado is its own state, but it's also in pad four, which is the Rocky Mountain pad. So I could try to separate these things out by state. I'm not gonna record that because that's gonna be very tedious. It's gonna be a lot of this kind of thing where I have like state names and, or I say pad names or the file name here. When I've called the region and matching it to state name. So I'll hand do that. Um, that's going to be tedious. But I do kind of want to look very quickly at just sort of trends. Um, I think it'd be interesting. Like, let's just take my data set. And let's just make some genome lines of stuff. Um, see what we can do here. X is date. Uh, hopefully that prints well. It may not print very well. Uh, like his price, and we can color it by region, maybe. This is probably not going to look very good. Um, I like the cow plot themes, so let's Klaus, Klaus's package is excellent. I'm going to just do a minimal grid, and let's see what we look like. 
It's probably going to be a bit of a mess too. Yeah, that's what I thought. Kind of all over the place. Um, and boy, the pandemic pricing is wild. We thought 2008 was bad. Look at this. This is insane. Um, okay, but that's not really helpful. Like maybe we can just facet it real quick. This also is just a good check for like kind of gut check. Um, like, am I missing anything? Did I do this right? <laughs> um, okay, now I know the colors are redundant here, but whatever. I'm just kind of digitally checking very quickly, like do things look the way I expect. I'm seeing a 2008 spike in every region. I'm not seeing any major missing data. I'm seeing California prices are look a little bit higher than everywhere else on average, especially now. Um, Florida prices are lower. Texas should also be lower. Yep, they're a little bit lower. Yeah, this kind of matches. So I don't think there's anything wildly wrong here. Um, this, I think, is probably pretty clean. So this is my last step I'll, I'll do. I'll do this myself, but at least I took care of those missing, uh, missing values. Okay, now I'm officially done.